Hi, I welcome all of you in my channel and in this video in which we are going to discuss about randomized complete block design. It is a statistical technique in which we block the effect of Nysen's factors. Nysen's factor or variable are those factors that affect our processes but we are not interested in their effects. So we are always in search of ways that how we can minimize the effect of those Nysen's factors on our response variable. So if the Nysen's factor is known and controllable, we will use blocking and this video is based upon blocking and will solve a problem based upon this RCBD or randomized complete block design. If the Nysen's factor is known but uncontrollable, we will use analysis of covariance and if the Nysen's factor is unknown and uncontrollable, then we will use randomization so in this video, we will combine this bullet number one point and three point combined in the RCBD. This is the principle of blocking. In the blocking, we will make the block of all the we test each block on the replication set of one replication. For example, in the problem, if the extrusion pressure, this is the factor in which we are interested. We have four different levels. So these are basically four different treatments and each of the set of treatments are we can say manufactured using one of the reason of the blocks so using the block one we have performed one complete replication then block two again one replication so for one you can say a batch we have performed one complete replication that's what i want to see when we talk about the statistical model of the randomized complete block design here it is yij this is the observation or individual value this is equal to mu is the overall mean plus tau i it's the treatment effect or you can say it's the row effect or you can say it is the effect of the variable in which we are interested plus beta j beta j is the column effect or it is the blocking effect plus epsilon ij these are the error terms where tau i it is for a for number of replica a number of treatments and beta j is for the b number of blocks and the error are usually n id normal and independently distributed with mean is equal to zero and variance is equal to one so the hypothesis become null hypothesis that is represented by h naught is equal to mu one is equal to mu two is equal to mu a it means that all of the means of the treatment effects are equal to each other and the alternate hypothesis will be at least one of the means is not equal to each other or at least one of the mean differs or you can say mu i is not equal to mu j like you can write it here mu i where the alternate hypothesis is equal to mu i is not equal to mu j the formula that will use to find sum of square total is equal to sum of square treatment sum of square of blocks and sum of square error so in this problem you will have to find three things initially sum of scale total sum of scale treatment and blocks and with the help of these three values you can easily find the sum of scale of the error let's start the example so example is all about the vascular crafts a medical device manufacturer produces vascular crafts this is our product these graphs are produced by extruding billets of poly tetrafluoroethylene combined with the lubricants into tubes. These two lines are related to the manufacturing processes. Frequently, these tubes contain uh, of these tubes in a production contain some defects. These are called flicks, and the tubes that contain the flicks are rejected. The product developer suspects that the extrusion pressure, this is our factor of interest. It affects the occurrence of flicks, I mean defect, and therefore intends to conduct an experiment to investigate this hypothesis that whether the extreme pressure affects or not. However, the reason is manufactured by an external supplier and it is, and is delivered to the medical device manufacturer in batches. So engineer suspects that there may be significant batch to batch variation. So batch to batch variation is a Nysen's factor that affects our process, but we are not interested in it directly. So we will control this, you can say, effect of Nysen's factors through the blocking. 
So the product developer decides to investigate the effect of four different levels of extrusion pressures on flicks using a randomized experimental design. So we will take our main factor as extrusion pressure and Nizen's factor as batch to batch, I mean batches. So the order in which extrusion pressure are tested or in which the experiments are conducted they are to be performed in a randomized order. It means that if you have 16 experiments, you will say that I will perform experiment number 7, 1, then 11, then 1st, then 8, like this 10. So we will, when we perform the experiment in a random uh, order, we will say that we have done the randomization. So the response variable is the yield or the percentage of tubes in the production that in the production run that did not contain any flicks or defects. We state our problem in this way that our inputs are extrusion pressure and reason whereas the effect of these two processes have been investigated on the process of vascular grafts and my response variable is yield. There will be two hypotheses. One hypothesis that the extrusion pressure do not affect the flicks and the reason do not affect the flicks. Accordingly, we, have, we will have two F0 values and we will have to compare these F0 values with our F calculated or F tabulated. So, to conduct this experiment, a randomized complete block design has been made and we have assigned all four pressures 8500, 8700, 8900 and 9100 to all six batches of the reason. I mean that at 8500, we have performed six experiments here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and these 6 experiments have been performed on the 6 batches of the material and each batch of the reason is used as a block. I mean that this 1 is a block, 2 is a block, 3 is a block and each block is basically a batch of the material. So if there is any difference among these mean values of the batches, so that will be appeared in our ANOVA table and similarly if there is any difference among the mean values of these four treatment levels we will also get the, the significance uh, in the ANOVA table. I will, I will solve this problem manually in the part 2 of this video. Hopefully you like this video kindly subscribe to my channel and if you have any question you can ask me in the comment section. Please hit the like button. Thanks for watching the video in advance. Bye.